to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Do not make the mistake of the second Eve, the first Eve. She did not refer Satan to the authority that was above her. Now the bride of Christ as the second Eve, he comes to us again. He comes to propose to you and you refer him to the authority that you are under. The Bible says, submit unto God. Then on the basis of your submission, resist the devil. You don't resist him by your own authority. It is on the strength of your submission, you resist the devil and he will flee. Are we together? So Jesus is in Gethsemane. Follow me, please. And he prayed and prayed and prayed. When he was done, what we call the exchange began to happen. That means everything that happened from that time was in exchange. My goodness, my goodness. The first thing that happened to him was the mockery that he went through. Everything that he went through was in exchange for what would now become our testimony. They mocked him and everything he went through. Then they put a crown of thorn on his head. They didn't know what they were doing. It was in exchange for the restoration of the dominion that man lost. Because the symbol of a king's dominion is his crown and his scepter. Without a crown and scepter, there is no royalty. So Jesus was receiving that crown of thorn so that our dominion be restored in experience. The Bible says they whipped him 40 stripes, save one, 39 stripes. While they whipped him and he went through all of those things and they tore his flesh. They did not understand that that body was being broken so that ours would be made whole. It's an exchange. Then, they carried this 33 year old man i hope you know he walked down the street of golgotha naked the covering you see in movies is just for social reasons he was a naked 33 year old man in the flesh when jesus was on his way to golgotha he was an object of pain and shame the father looked at him and yet for the love that he had for man he said jesus you have to go through this Everybody mocked him while he went. At a point he fell. Now watch this carefully. He fell because he did not have the strength to continue. He had lost blood. When he fell down right there, they called someone called Simon of Cyrene. I don't have the time. I would have taught you that that is Africa. The Bible calls him the nigger. A black man a black man I was the only continent that identified with Jesus on his way to the cross he said I may not mean much they despise me but I can help you carry the cross that is the reason why in all honesty this is the continent that will stand to represent a true portrait of apostolic and prophetic Christianity the Bible says if we partook of his sufferings, then we must also partake of the glory that follows. This is a message for Africa, that rejected stone. Mm. When Jesus was on his way to the cross, every continent left him. But Africa said, I will not run away from you. I will go through the shame. Listen, I hope you know that if Jesus died without dying on the cross, that would be a wasted death. He had to die on the cross to be a cause, not to die on the floor. Because there is a law that is written that is only on a tree when you die that you become a cause. 
So if he died on the floor, it would have still been a wasted project. Jesus was about to abort redemption. But for man who came and said, no, I will not let this happen. You may not have the energy, but I will take that cross. And when Jesus hung upon that cross, ladies and gentlemen, as he bled, as he cried, the father turned his face. The Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. All of this was done because of you and me. God was not looking for anything for himself. You have to understand this. And then Jesus gave up the ghost, the Bible says. When he died, do you know what happened in hell? There was jubilation beyond imagination. Satan could not believe it. So life can die. The author of life. There was jubilation in hell. The saints who were in Abraham's bosom in Hades were now confused. What is happening here? I thought there was prophecy that a time is coming. Redemption will come for us. Let me give you a little drama of what happened in hell. While Satan, his celebration was short-lived, all of a sudden, a stranger steps into the place of the dead. Listen, sit down, sit down. He went to hell without the Holy Ghost. He went to hell with the power that was originally given to man in the strength of the second Adam. If he was assisted by the Holy Ghost, he would be unfair. He needed to go as man. And the Bible says, Paul was given this revelation. The cohorts of hell were on him. Colossians chapter 2, you read 14, 15, 16. The Bible says the cohorts of hell were upon him, forcing him to bow. What is him bowing? Whoever you bow to, you acknowledge their authority. And since he came as the express image of God. And while he was bowing, the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul. Do you know what that means? One of the secrets to peace is justice. Without justice, there will be no peace. So the legal claims of justice had to be met. And Jesus, humiliated by those principalities and powers, the moment there was a declaration, satisfied. The Bible says Jesus made a public show of them in hell. All these things was happening in Hades. Dislodged all these demons and went to Lucifer himself. Good to see you. Bring the key that you gave Adam. That key that he collected in the Garden of Eden. Revelation chapter 1. I am he that was dead. But now he's alive and I have the keys. He did not collect the key on earth. When he collected that key, the next place he went to was to go and preach to the souls. Right there. Who were at Abraham's bosom. It's in your Bible. Apostle Peter told us that he preached the gospel to them. Because they could not be condemned. They had not been given an opportunity to declare. They died in faith and in hope. When he preached to them, all of them said, we've been waiting for you. And he said, all right, let's go. And together as a team, watch this. Jesus did not resurrect alone. It was only his grave you saw. But the Bible says, graves open. Imagine that event. A similitude of the rapture. Graves began to open. Several people came out. And listen, the Bible says, when the graves opened, the people walked in Jerusalem. They saw them. And afterwards, they couldn't go to heaven because he had to be the firstborn. There was a high priestly ministry. Now he had finished his ministry as savior, but he was not yet Lord. Uh -uh. If, listen to me, the resurrection was the basis for his coronation. The coronation is the basis for his being Lord now. When he resurrected, three things happened. One, he took his blood. There is a heavenly tabernacle that is in the similitude of the one that was instructed for Moses to build. 
are we together where atonement would happen and according to the levitical law the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement so every year they had to renew now to end this once and for all the ageless lamb now drained his blood and took it to that tabernacle and poured it there once and for all the moment that happened he finished his high priestly ministry a coronation service like david saw the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool please understand this if you don't believe what i'm saying you are not a christian a coronation service was held in heaven and in that coronation service a name was given to him philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 down to 10 the bible says wherefore on account of this humility and this sacrifice god hath so highly exalted him verse 9 and given him a name a name that is above every other name above every other name and then the bible says verse 10 that at the name of jesus that means the name is not jesus no i know you call jesus you are just saying jesus is the owner of that name that was given the name is not jesus jesus was the name he was given when he was born there are footballers today called jesus that every knee should bow of things in heaven in earth and under the earth verse 11 it says and every tongue should confess that that jesus who became the christ when the holy ghost came upon him has now become lord that's the name notice the progression jesus he became the christ when the holy ghost came upon him and now when he completed the sacrifice of redemption the name is lord lord means absolute owner psalm 24 the earth is the whoever has that name is the owner of the earth there are four things that are there give us psalm 24 and verse 1 the earth is the lord's the fullness is the lord's the world and they that dwell therein all of them they belong to him now when jesus resurrected and that coronation service was done he quickly came back to earth and they saw him isn't it amazing that the first person who saw the resurrected christ was a woman this is why women are gates in the realm of the spirit the first person to see the resurrected christ was a woman he said take that message go and tell the disciples and then jesus made a very interesting statement he said all authority by reason of resurrection all authority has been given unto me matthew chapter 28 now all authority has been given unto me verse 18 matthew 28 and verse 18 all power well it says authority power but the word there is authority that is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 it says go therefore now you your celebration of easter and the resurrection does not end with your awareness that you are justified there is a mandate attached to it go therefore please give it to us verse 19 and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit 20 the bible says teaching them to observe all these things i have commanded you and whilst you do this be assured that i am with you even to the end of the age do you know that without the resurrection there is no christianity the resurrection proved the lordship it proved once again and finally so that jesus christ give us romans i believe romans chapter 1 and verse 4 romans chapter 1 and verse 4 the bible talks about the implication of the resurrection that he was declared to be the son of god with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead 
so he's resurrecting from the dead proof once and for all that this is the son of god we would have the basis to argue prophets perform miracles the disciples perform miracles but now jesus resurrected from the dead as the son of the living god the new and living way the mediator even of the new covenant romans chapter 4 and verse 25 tells us one of the benefits and the significance of the resurrection the bible says he was delivered for our offenses and he was raised again for our justification being justified means being declared not guilty that the price and the penalty has been paid are we together yes so today we have confidence to stand in faith today we have confidence to celebrate many things one that there is access to become the righteousness of God access to become partakers of his life once again Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the Lord the Bible says being made a curse for us for it is written curse is every man that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham justification by faith might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith that seal of redemption now we have access to the Holy Spirit and then we have access to dominion sovereign control once again we are not weak people under the situations the, under the, the influence of situations and circumstances our dominion has been restored this will remain theory until you believe this truth what then is the gospel of salvation please look up what is the gospel of salvation because the Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. What then is the gospel of salvation? Listen carefully. The gospel of salvation is the revelation of the Father's love. The revelation of the Father's love. Demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The object of that sacrifice is the entire creation, but man being his central focus. He didn't die for man alone. He died for the entire creation. He reconciled creation to himself. To the end that whoever believes his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension, that that person should not perish but now become a partaker of his life so when we preach this glorious gospel we are not just recruiting members to a church listen there is a mandate that the whole world must know that he arose and that today he reigns and the bible says the same way it gives us a blessed hope that if jesus rose up from the dead and death did not have power over him that one day everybody who has died in christ let me bring a word of hope for you everybody you know who left you and died in christ there will be a resurrection where the dead in christ will arise the bible says and we who are alive will be caught up with him in the air there are seven pillars one day we'll discuss it maybe not tonight seven pillars of the christian faith seven of them the last of them is the blessed hope of the resurrection. Christianity is not complete if we do not believe in the resurrection. Both of Jesus Christ and in the fact that one day, all together, we will experience that glorious experience. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son. And live in your spirit till your work on earth is done. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son. And live in your spirit till your work on earth is done. The gospel of salvation no matter what you preach 
no matter what rema you bring the foundation for the believers justification is that jesus christ the son of the living god left heaven came and walked upon the earth became seen died and was buried and according to the authority of scripture the bible says on the third day he rose again today he is seated in the right hand of the father that position of authority still continuing his priestly ministry making intercession for the saints what is the intercessory ministry like he says father i've been there i understand i've been there i know what it means for your temple to become a den of robbers i flogged people i understand listen to me jesus christ ascended to heaven with his physical body that is the proof that he's coming back if jesus christ went to heaven without his body he will still need another virgin he will still need to come back and grow he went to heaven as an adult so every condition for his return has been met the body for him to use when he's back is with him now this is what gives us confidence so when we say that jesus is coming we are not preaching a christian's gospel it is true the man jesus is seated at the right hand of the father and the bible lets us know that a time will come we will hear of that loud trumpet it says to comfort one another is the return of jesus christ is not supposed to be a scary event no the return of jesus christ is an event that we should look forward to with passion and with joy the glorious reconnection someday whether we like it or not this life will fold like a curtain listen to me one glorious morning we'll wake up wanting to do our thing as always and suddenly it will happen listen it will not happen the way movies told you to happen they didn't read the bible well it will be so fast the bible says like the twinkling of an eye before you know it there will be a mass disappearance of people you come to me for counseling you won't find me i'm gone yes sir the fact that you are there is a sign that when i make the altar call you should run and come let me tell you this the moment there is that glorious exodus you will see people run to church in confusion the bible you will leave behind people will run and hold it and say what is happening the bible will suddenly become a bestseller it will be the most accurate road map from thence no other book no other thing will matter and we'll meet with him and we'll say savior we believed you and we spent our life making the world know listen the issue of the gospel is not a task of an evangelist alone you have to understand this this is why we labor day and night to see that this glorious gospel the global harvest because a day is coming whether you like it or not jesus christ will return and the bible says the remainder of the harvest together as a family that would be the unleashing of catastrophe on earth catastrophe that will make saddam hussein look like an angel what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing but your assignment now is to believe that he died your assignment 
is to believe that when he went to hell he went there for you please listen to what i'm telling you regardless who you are regardless what religion and for those of you who are watching me from all around the world i respect your spiritual convictions but what you are hearing is not an opinion of a religion a day will come everybody will believe everybody in hell today is a believer the only thing is that they believe too late So when we celebrate Easter, yes, eat the chicken, eat, celebrate with people, but let there be a consciousness. If Jesus is not Savior, if Jesus is not Lord, if Jesus is not King, there is nothing to celebrate. And then if that has happened to you, then you must ask yourself, am I fulfilling the other part? Because he says, on the strength of this consciousness, go. And there are many ways to go. There are those who go physically and labor in the vineyard. There are those who finance them as they go. They trust God for grace and they communicate resources. Don't, don't please feel at ease. I'm not raising any money at all. We love God and we fear God. But let me tell you sincerely. What gives value to these mundane things that we pursue on earth is to what degree it contributes to kingdom come. No matter what you have, if there is no bearing, if there is nothing in it, whether it's a political position, business, family, education, certificate, I respect your pedigree. But if there is nothing in your achievement that is contributing to this Goyi mission, I assure you, you are not being part of God's program. Not everybody will be a pastor, an apostle, an evangelist. But the consciousness of the global harvest, this is not a church affair. Oh, how that the Father's heart bleeds every day. Where are the men and the women? Where are those who will go? Where are those who will make this happen? Can I tell you this? There are over, we're getting close to 8 billion people on earth. And only about 2.6, if I'm not mistaken, are professing Christians. That, that's including those who don't know what they are doing altogether, just from a statistical point. Now, I'm saying it sincerely. Look up. That's a serious issue. We keep teaching and saying one day Jesus will come. Do you not know that scripture declares that his coming is tied to our seriousness over the global harvest? Why will Jesus come for only 2.6 billion people? What happens to the remaining? What happens to your uncle? What happens to your auntie? It is painful to stand at the shores of eternity and see someone you so love at the other side. Brothers and sisters, hear me. I bring you a very powerful Easter message before I minister for a few minutes and we're done. If we remove Jesus out of the question, everything we're doing, we can teach kingdom. That's wonderful. I shared with them in Lagos and I said, any other thing, you, if you worship the four living creatures, it's still idolatry. If you worship the throne, it's still idolatry. If you worship the 24 elders, it's still idolatry. If you worship heaven, it's still idolatry. You worship anointing, it's still idolatry. You worship a man of God, it's still idolatry. For there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. The consciousness of the global harvest is gradually eroding our minds. The local assembly is supposed to be the receiving place for souls that are one so that they now be matured and grounded are we together now yes church came because of the harvest that means that people are saved and they are brought to church then they are matured. They are mentored through the ministry of the fivefold. They now mature. They experience the victory of Christ themselves. Then among the many other things they are involved with, they now go back and also become part of the team 
that makes that global harvest happen. Some of you here, God has trusted you with wealth. Understand the purpose of it. Some of you, God has trusted you with tremendous influence. Understand the purpose of it. Some of you, God has trusted you with all kinds of political strength. Understand the purpose of it. Some of you, God has trusted you with business acumen. You are veterans in business. Understand the purpose of it. Nothing finds its meaning outside of thy kingdom come project. It is this global harvest that gives credence to everything. So if you are praying, Lord, give me prosperity. You are praying with respect to kingdom. Lord, give me a political position with respect to kingdom. God is only interested in how what you are asking for will contribute to kingdom come. Up from the grave, the hymn says, he arose with the mighty triumph over his foe. The Bible says he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever together with his saints to reign scripture declares paul mentoring the church in ephesus he told us that today we have been raised up with christ jesus is no longer the only begotten he's now the firstborn of we the begotten beloved of the father what is the implication of this that number one we have peace with god number two we are now one with christ the bible says so Listen, the Bible says so. Your oneness with Christ is the basis of your authority, is the basis of the spiritual power that comes upon your life. You become a blessing when you understand you are one with Christ. These hands are ordinary hands, but not when you walk with the consciousness that I am one with Christ. Then the ordinary hands become supernatural. These lips are ordinary lips of clay, but not when you are one with Jesus. They become supernatural literally the reality of the divine life comes from the consciousness of your oneness and the bible says he that is joined to the spirit of god is one spirit it's a salt covenant inseparable are we blessed dominion is now restored creation should listen to you it should submit to the sovereign grace that has been placed upon your life. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I bring you a real message of hope and a message of power. Jesus is the center and the focal point of the Christian's pursuit. Jesus, not ministry. We will teach other aspects of the kingdom life as a tool for maturing the saints. But tonight, from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you be the center of your church Jesus be the center of your church from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus listen return back home with this consciousness Gather your children together and tell them, look, I gave you money, I gave you education, but I need to present Jesus. He died and he rose. Today he is alive. I believe in Jesus. This is why we do the things that we do. To see that we become contributors to this global harvest. Is the reason why we trust him for greater levels of his grace so the sick can be healed so that the every miracle every manifestation of the miraculous is not just promoting the man of god it's not just promoting the ministry there is a message behind it 
Jesus is Lord, enthroned. So whilst we begin to pray and God starts changing people's lives, some of you overnight it will do you like a dream that a captivity of years will suddenly fade away. This time, listen, don't just celebrate the miracle. Read the letter that that miracle brought. I am Lord. Exalted. Reminds me of my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. It remains ever fresh. It's an encounter that never fades. That face that I saw, you can look at it for the rest of your life and not be tired. It's not like men that I look at your shoe, I look at this, I'm tired. No. I'm about to make an altar call and then we'll pray. This resurrection day, you should not walk back with the chains that came with you. Because it is true that he's risen. The resurrection is what gave us justification. Now that we are justified, we have access to all the dimensions of grace. The Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Are we together? I know that there are people here you sang thank God for the brilliant worship team and all the mighty things that had happened here but you are in this auditorium thousands of you you are outside all of the overflows down the thousands of people following from around the world we must get to the point where we make Jesus the desire of nations not just ministry Jesus we must make Jesus become the, the focal point in this city. Wherever you are. Do not allow this significant day to pass. Whilst you are seated inside and outside, the spirit of the living God is talking to you. And he's saying you need Jesus. Not just as a religious experience. No. Probably there are some of you, you once gave your life to Jesus, but right now looking at your life, you know that you need to come to him again. Aside from those here at the balcony, every other overflow, I would request when I make the call that you just walk to your projector screen and then those outside too, those online you can follow very carefully. I'm going to count one to five and I want you to leave your seat sincerely. If you're saying, Apostle, I need Jesus as a matter of life. I'm not pretending it. He will win that war. No matter where you are, no man condemns you. This is home. Come. One. Two, keep coming. Celebrate them as they come. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame. When you died and rose again Now today you reign In heaven and now exalted I really want to worship you my God You have won my heart and I am yours Forever and ever I will love you You are the only one who died life to set me free so i lift my voice to you jesus is still calling people don't sit back and say we came there are so many people and i'm ashamed no leave your seat and come celebrate them as they come outside all the overflows down those following online 
from the US to Europe to Asia all over the world he calls you today this is the greatest gift we can give his majesty to celebrate this day someday when we stand before him we will see everyone who is out here and we will rejoice what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing don't let the devil condemn you this is home you are not coming to a funeral this is where you exchange your weakness for his strength this is where you exchange your limitations this is where you exchange every cost for his strength hallelujah let's take it down you know i'm looking at an adorable baby here that came with her mother and i almost feel like just grabbing that lady to lift her up i've got a message from the lord hallelujah a message unto you I bring It is recorded in his word Hallelujah It's only that you look and leave Sing it with me Look and leave My brother leave Look to Jesus Christ and leave We've got a message from the Lord Hallelujah It's only that you do The Bible declares for God so loved the world That he gave then his one and only begotten Today he's the firstborn of we the begotten To the end that whosoever believes in him The Bible says he should not perish But have everlasting life I thank you for the courage to come it takes a lot of courage please lift your right hand with me as high as you can to the heavens Jesus is standing here I want you to make this declaration let it be from the depth of your heart and let it be in truth some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears you're before Jesus say after me Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus thank you for your death thank you for your resurrection tonight i have heard your word and i declare that i love you with all my heart i declare according to the authority of scripture that jesus from today and forever is my lord my savior and my king i declare that from today I walk in victory Satan take your hands away from my life he's hearing you say it again Satan take your hands from my life I declare that I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen and amen Praise the name of the Lord. Father, as a trophy of honor, we present to you these souls. It is a joy to see them come to become part of this global family. And Lord, we thank you. Because no man comes to you except you draw them. The eloquence of a preacher cannot draw people. It is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Therefore, Lord, I pray that you will keep them. I commend them to the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word I declare that you walk in the newness of life from today in the name of Jesus now very quickly this is what I want you to do there's someone waving the placard there's a counselor there please I will request all of you in concert just follow the counselor the placard they'll just have your details very quickly and you return to your seat can we honor them as they go koinonia is this the best you can do Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. 
do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Post. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.